there is a kind of computer called mini computer about two months ago I decided to take custody of one such mentally retarded and also underdeveloped. I ordered one Bayer board from AliExpress. I'm a hoarder, so I ordered a version with useless 8GB of memory. And I was like, why do I need to buy a power supply for it, after all I have a phone charger? And after a while, when the board was on its way to me, I decided that it would be a great idea to order the case to it, and also heatsinks, and a small, which is as cheesy as the same board 3.5 inch display with a resolution of 480 by 320 pixels. While this hybrid of smartphone and computer was on its way to me, I carefully watched the recruitment videos of those people who talked about how wonderful, free and incredibly convenient Linux kernel systems are. Inspired by their videos, I made a video about 9 weird Linux operating systems. If you haven't watched it, you should do it. From their video I understood that Linux is for super people, and I believe it, because to know Linux systems inside out, especially all the console commands, you have to be a really superhuman. So the board came to me. And at first I was looking at it more sillier than a cow at a new gate. I couldn't figure out where it had the power button. I figured out later that it turns on after you plug in the power cord. The first thing I had to do was to put the operating system on the microSD card which I took from my smartphone for my computer. With this question I went to Raspberry Pi site from which I downloaded the installers and installed on the card recommended by the developer's operating system. Yes, first the recommended one and then the full one. I inserted the memory card into the computer, plugged in my mouse, keyboard, computer, phone charger and was amazed by the speed of the operating system. It's a weight simulator. From the first seconds I knew something was wrong. On the top right there was a lightning icon that subtly hints at a weak power source, which is my phone charger. Then I noticed that the CPU is slightly hot and I suspected that the slow memory card might be a bottleneck, the card is almost 10 years old. The card was the thing with which I started the upgrade of this PC. But the developer's website didn't say what specifications are required for it. They recommend buy their official memory card. I thought, okay, and went looking for it on the internet. 25 bucks for 32 gigabytes? No way, I can't afford to buy this for the price. Religion won't let me. Anyway, I've looked at the different memory cards and came to the conclusion that it makes no difference what kind of card to use, the main thing is not the slowest one. I took this 128GB Samsung memory card because I will also use it for my camera. In general, I bought the card, installed the OS, inserted the card into the computer the second time, connected everything and changed it exactly nothing. I unplugged everything, then guessed to install the radiators that came with the box. What if the CPU is simply overheat? Also took the board into the case and the third time assembled and connected everything, but nothing changed. The third time I took everything apart, decided to get rid of the lightning icon by buying a regional power supply for 5 volts and 3 amps. I don't know how many times I got it all together and plugged it in, and the result was that the lightning bolt was gone and the computer was noticeably faster, but that wasn't the end of my suffering. As they say, it was just the beginning. After 5 minutes the computer performance dropped. What is it this time? You could roast a shish cap up on the CPU heatsink. Once again, I don't know why, I disassembled the entire computer, reassembled everything and connected to the pins 90mm fan, which is supposed to work on 12 volts. It obviously didn't work, as I guessed I needed a fan that runs on 5 volts. For it, I went to the local store, which obviously didn't sell it. Furious, I came to home, took the fucking 90mm propeller and plugged it into the normal computer through an extension cord. I put the fan on the top, turned it on, and finally the throat thing stopped. Here are the temperatures in different usage scenarios. Yes, on a 2 amp charge the temperature is small because the CPU is dropping the frequency but it doesn't tell me that and lies about running at max frequency. Next I set up the way I need it. Here is the temperature of the CPU, on the right the CPU load and on the left its current frequency. And that's what kind of operating system speed I got. Come on, faster. Life is too short as it is and YouTube will have to load before I retire. Oh, I forgot I'm already retired. I will not speed up the video for you to see how really slow it is. I think I will find comrades in comments who have this supercomputer working faster than Threadripper of 5000 series, DDR5 memory running in 8 channel,
it can barely play HD video, but I will not want to watch it even before the startup happens. But in Full HD the CPU is howling with the pain. Of course I forgot to enable PC resource monitor as usual, but I assure you it is running at its maximum and I wasn't happy with this situation, so I decided to overclock the board. To do that I had to enter a couple of commands in the terminal, wait for it to load everything and after that you need to open config.txt file through the terminal and add three lines of text. The CPU here is running at incredible 1.5 GHz. I'm going to overclock it to 2.2 GHz. The GPU was running at 500 MHz, so I overclocked it to 750. It only had 72 MB of memory, so I gave it 512. I set the voltage to 6. I don't know what that means, it wasn't mentioned in the article where I copied it down. Actually, this is how the overclocked Raspberry runs the OS, and I will say that the system is a little bit faster, I think you can see this because of how fast the browser on the right side loads, however, it is still disappointing. Yes, it does make sense to overclock, but for me it's still not enough. The average temperature went up by 13 degrees, but even with overclocking, Full HD still lags. And here I caught myself thinking that I turned out to be choosy, because for someone such a level of performance is quite acceptable and I'm used to that I have one and Z which can perform such tasks instantly. Maybe that is the reason I'm wondering why the fuck is this query is so slow? Yeah, people get used to good things fast, I already forgot how I suffered with 775 socket. By the way, the OS here is 32-bit and the system sees all 8GB of memory, I didn't know Linux can do that. I was thinking like, now I will buy myself a Raspberry Pi and will start hacking Pentagon on it, but in the end I almost broke my head until I figured out how to configure it. Now let's calculate how much this supercomputer cost me. The board $90, charger $13, memory card I took with the reserve could be smaller to take. It costed me $17. Bucks. Heatsink, case, and display 15 bucks. By the way, display sucks. I spent two days just to install the drivers to make it work, and it turns out with low clock speed you can't watch movies or play games on it, and to surf internet comfortably with this screen you need to scale the web pages. In short, 125 bucks is the price of this toy. At all, it's not very expensive. As a personal computer, this thing is too weak, somewhere on the level of Core to Duo. From side to side, it jumps pretty quickly. By the way, their website already has a newer model of this computer, but as a newer model, essentially it's the same thing, only the board is mounted in the keyboard and damn and I should have bought this. I mean, instead of the square I got. As the developers said, this device was created so that almost any user could get their own personal supercomputer, <laughs> I mean, just a computer, both for normal office work and development needs. So fellow Linux users, don't write me that this board was not made for degradation. The devs themselves said that they oriented not only on programmers and masochists, but also on normal people, and I tested it as a person far away from programming and creating some makings. If only this machine had something like Snapdragon 800, then it would be priceless. After all, it's not easy to connect monitor, card reader and a keyboard with a mouse to a smartphone. By the way, the sound flows out of this box is not very well, and to be more specific, it's horrible. To cut a long story short, if you were going to buy the silly computer and accidentally came across this video because YouTube recommended it, all you should know that it's a palm-sized core to do that is 15 watts of power and makes almost no noise, but you won't play Fortnite on it either. If you're a long-time Linux user, then you don't care about things I say, you know better for yourself why do you need this miserable box. Well, I think we have done enough, so forget to rate this video, subscribe to the channel, and see you later.